Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Explore China, Chancellor Zhongguo. And this time, it's not me who's going to introduce a book or talking about a book, but uh, Ribana. I'm very happy to have you here today. And because we uh, met in a last week's uh, online meeting where we were talking about uh, Chinese books, especially about uh, Lenin's Kisses or the German name Lenin's Kisses. And I hear that Ribana is quite familiar with this book and she accepted to join us here today. And maybe first of all, you can introduce yourself, Ribana. Yes, and I'm also very happy to be here. Uh, so I study Sinology. Uh, first, I studied my bachelor in Frankfurt and now I'm in Tübingen. Uh, I was in China several times. Like the first time was voluntary work for one year in a rural place in Yunnan in more southern China. And then I did the exchange semester once in uh, Beijing at Beida and then in Shanghai at Fudan. So now I write my master's thesis um, here in Tübingen. Wow, okay. So you are quite familiar with China already. Um, and you learned Chinese for seven years, I think. Uh, yes, traveled for so about seven years, I think. Okay. Awesome, okay. So now let's um, go to the book. And the, when was the book first published? So the um, German version appeared 2015, but the Chinese version already um, was uh, written in 2004. Okay. And um, what kind of book is it? Is it more fiction or more based on facts uh, and... Uh, or is there like a fiction fact ratio you could give us? Um, I would say it has parts that are uh, very fictional. The, like the main story, it's more like a tale. But okay. then the world around, it's very real. It is China, both in nowadays and also um, in the era under Mao. So this part is not fiction. So it's also interesting for people who want to learn something about China, but also want to have like a story around it. Yes, I would say so. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like these books who combine history and some facts. And yeah, maybe you can tell us about the main story. What is happening in the book? Mm -hmm. um, so the main story involves around two characters. One is Maoja who's uh, like the head of a small village. And this village, it's called Shouhua. It's also the title of the original book. And uh, Shouhua, uh, it's a special village because uh, the people who live there are all people with disabilities. And uh, the other character is uh, Liu Yingchue, who's uh, a very ambitious local governor who tries to make this whole area, also the area um, includes uh, Shouhua, more, um, more rich. And so he has this very special plan, uh, very absurd, that he wants to buy the corpse of Lenin in order to get tourism to that area. And uh, he needs to raise money for that. And so he wants to form a kind of circus with the people from the village because they all have some special talents and then tour around with them to raise the money for the Corps of Lenin. Okay, I see. So I guess that is also where the book is getting its uh, name from because Lenin yes. is here, isn't it? Okay. Yes. Yeah, it sounds uh, quite absurd. And uh, here the book is also partly uh, famous or so nice because it has this uh, craziness inside. It does. And um, Jan Lierke once said that his work is actually not absurd, but uh, life is absurd. Oh, yes, I think uh, it is in many regards. <laughs> Quite some time, yes. And yes, um, you are writing your master thesis about the book or in some points about the book. And you also told me before that uh, currently, there's also a famous German book which deals, uh, which talks about a simi similar issue. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so this is the book we discuss now, Lenin's Kisses, and I want to compare it with uh, Unterleuten. 
Okay. Uh, this one is from Juli C. So it's a German author. Okay. And, um, and Unterleuten would mean like lower people, right? Um, the, now it's, uh, it's also the name of the uh, village. So ah, also in the, the original, okay. this is also a similarity. Like in the original version, both books have the name of the village as their title. And the name of the village also has some special meaning with it. So. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, very similar. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> what is the, the other similarities uh, between between that? that uh, because I think uh, you said that in China, they go through the different periods of communism and uh, capitalism. And in Germany, uh, what time is, does the book play and what place? Um, it has roughly the same structure. So uh, it also uh, takes part uh, about nowadays. Okay. Like, uh, it could be in, uh, recent, like just this year, not this year because it was before Corona, but you know, so and um, then it has some um, uh, like the memory of the people in the German village is mm -hmm. also about the communist time because it's in Eastern Germany. Ah, okay, I see. Okay, yeah. So when the change happened uh, after the German unification in the 1990, I see. Yes, but it's like in both books, it's from the perspective of a village, like not only from a person, but from a whole village. And you know, there in all villages, there exist some people, like people who don't like each other or some weird family connections. Okay. So it's a, like a small world on its own. And then there's this big policy change, like communism, and if it affects the dynamic of these small villages. And both books show these uh, connections in a quite similar way, I think. Okay. And how do the people actually act when they see the changes? Do they just let it influence their lives or do they first revolt? Or is there like a, maybe some, you said it's a similar. So, so I thought that maybe it, what, what we can see here now when we have big changes that Europeans or maybe Germans first go now on the streets to demonstrate and go against many things. But where I would say that Chinese people would uh, adapt more. Mm, I feel that both villages try to kind of stay the same. Like okay. um, people are there, they, um, they know their life and they don't want it to change that much. And uh, some, some figures, they uh, might uh, step in and try to adapt the village to the new policy, but it's more like how to get along with the policy. Um, then okay, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So and we're trying to find out a way. Mm -hmm. Like how can we stay almost the same with this new policy? Like with uh, especially with communism. But when it comes to capitalism, yeah. it's a little bit different because there are some few people who are like some people see it as an opportunity mm -hmm. and that separates the people. So um, some are ambitious and then there are new uh, like mm, some people get, don't get along which is, which, with each other afterwards. Okay. Yeah, so I, I have another question and mm -hmm. I thought, I think you mentioned before that there's also one aspect of Taoism in this book. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is this? Yes, before like in uh, Lenin's Kisses, I also uh, found that there's this um, principle in Taoism, especially from Zhuangzi, the um, usefulness of the useless so the usefulness that, of the useless mm -hmm. i understand okay mm -hmm. so uh and when it comes to the people in shohua they are all uh, people with disabilities uh, so they are kind of forgotten by society and that is actually for them for use uh, because there, there's also a lot of harm that comes with some political change, 
but if the village is forgotten, those changes don't affect them that much. Yeah, makes sense, right? If someone doesn't care about someone else, he will be left alone and he won't get responsibilities. Yes, yes. Um, the metaphor in uh, the Taoism is that there is a tree and because it doesn't grow straight, so it cannot be used for wood. And that's why all the other trees are cut down, but not this one tree. He is uh, so twisted and he cannot be used. That's why he grow old and big. And at the end, he's like the biggest, oldest tree. And that's his uh, use in being useless. Mm. Oh, quite philosophic. Okay, sometimes it's also good if you're not, let's say, perfect or like the, the standard yes <laughs> okay yes. yeah and one comparison in the german book in the german village these people are not disabled right yes um that's why they are a little bit um, they are they are not so easy to not get involved because uh, oh. i mean the thing is they are a little bit off so on the countryside so that always gives you some chances of not be affected too much but i feel like the people in the chinese one in shouhua they have uh, like a bigger chance to get away from the big changes okay yes and do you think now uh now in modern china now um people in the countryside, they want to get uh, actually affected by the big changes and want to join the modern life or think uh, what they have, their traditions, they are peaceful or they are quiet, not so fast paced life is uh, better? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I feel like it's a little bit like presented in the uh, end of the book, um, the young people, a lot of them, they want to join society and yes. they want to be part of the change. They see hope and uh, they want to earn money and go out there. And the old people, they uh, still have the memory of the communist change in mind. So they still know our change can bring a lot of damage. So uh, some of the old people, they are more like uh, maybe a big fast change is not that good okay yeah interesting okay that you say that the old people are feared about too much change because i think they they saw the change uh, during the great leap forward and the cultural revolution but still they also saw then the opening up and uh, fast progression in the 80s 90s and 2000s in china mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like sometimes in Germany, it's also a little bit the same. Like, you know, old people who think, ah, oh, all those modern stuff. And the young people who are like, yes, change is finally there. Yes, I agree. <laughs> okay, yeah, there you got me as well, because I think uh, having change is good or having some change in this direction or this direction is better than having no change. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you got me there because I think it brings progress and uh, I think it's uh, good. But uh, yeah, in the end, can you recommend to read this book to us? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, I enjoyed reading it. I think you can get a lot from this book. Um, and yeah, if you want, try it, read it, please. Okay. Yes, thank you. And maybe one last question is, uh, was, was one highlight of this book which you enjoyed a lot? Mm. It's always difficult to pick like one, uh, but um, there's like one scene. I don't know why I like it, but there are some old dogs who all come to this uh, main character, Mauja, uh, and they like, because she's ha she has such a tough time, all the novel, and she never gets reward. And then there are those all old, dogs coming it's like a tail and then they kneel down to thank her because she saved one of their puppet like one of the little dogs okay and i don't know for me it was like with all this struggle and then at least the dogs recognize her helping okay everybody 
Yeah, that, maybe, uh, maybe it's necessary to read it to to get me, but I yeah, that was something I really enjoyed. Ah, yeah, it it sounds interesting for sure. Um, I'm not sure if I will go to read it because uh, Yen Lianke, I think he also has other famous works, and I haven't read any of his books. Maybe you can, you know, uh, other books which are worth reading. Mm -hmm, yes, like um, other famous books um, are, for example, Dream of Ding Village. In German, it's uh, Der Traum meines Großvaters or uh, Ding Zhuang Mung in Chinese. Um, it got really famous because of an AIDS scandal that is uh, like part of the main story. And of course, it's a sensitive topic in China. That's why it's also banned there. Mm, and another famous one of his uh, earlier books is Serving one, the one, People. One more question. Yes. You said it's banned in China, but do you think uh, it's still people read it in China? Because people, maybe they also have a way to, to get to it. I think some people still read it, but um, like if something is not pu published, then maybe it's also difficult to get interested in it, like to know about it. Okay. I feel like because like for us, these books are easy access and still we struggle like, ah, it's not an easy book. Maybe I don't read it. So, and if you need to put in effort to get access, then maybe you just think that too much effort. Okay, I got your point, yes. <laughs> yeah. And, um, ah, yes, you wanted to know other books, right? Uh, yes. Uh, also, like, Serving the People is famous. Okay. And um, his newest famous book is The Four Books, Se Shu, uh, Die Vier Bücher. Um, yeah, I think that's his most recent famous book, also banned in China. Or I think he, I'm not sure, maybe he only published it uh, outside of China in the first place. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's quite some recommendations here. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, so also to all of you viewers, I hope you like this uh, edition like this with an interview format. And yes, I think this is it for this episode. And thank you a lot, Ribana, for being here today and for sharing your knowledge with us. Yeah, thank you also very much. I enjoyed it. Okay, great. Then goodbye 